Scotty A Sports brings us to North Carolina and Bank of America Stadium here in Charlotte. Today we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Carolina Panthers. Eddie Pinheiro about set to get us going and we are underway here in Charlotte. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Another run here with Sanders. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. There's a nice move. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. So front Panther territory now. It's first and 10 at the 38. Up the middle they go with Sanders. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. No doubt about it. Really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback. They also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. The Panthers turn to their nickel set here as they get ready for third down. Hurt sets up to throw it. Throw left side complete. That's Watkins. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers 21. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first and ten, it's Hurts. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And it goes down. So second and long, you've got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Another try after the first down sack. Hurts. That is caught. It's the tight end, Goddard. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength trying to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Hurts. And this is going to be incomplete. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. They're going on fourth down with Hurts. And Goddard's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Eagles' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Elliott good on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. First and 10 for the Panthers as Corral gets them set at their own 19-yard line. Corral with it on first down. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. They'll run it here. This is Deontay Foreman finding space at the 40. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That good for 22 and a first down. Oh, 
They'll run out of the gun. It's Hubbard. And they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. First down, they'll stay on the ground with Hubbard. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The last run got six, now second and four. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Here's Foreman. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working, but how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. Corral from the gun on third down here. Throw left side, going to be caught by Chanel. Touchdown! LaVisca Chanel, 33 yards. And the Panthers are an extra point away from drawing level. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. And oh, he missed it. No good. And they'll remain down by a point. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here we go. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'm warned against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it. <laughs> Looking for Sanders, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Amari Barno. A few things better than a big man interception. You can always tell right when they get the football, there's that level of excitement and nervousness and also like, what the heck do I do with this thing? <laughs> and you say, no better sight. Well, not for the quarterback to just throw it. It's bad enough to throw a pick, but to throw one to the big guy? But you're right about that. Now what do I do with it? But what's fun about it is, you know they're going to be in the film room after this ball game, tell all their teammates, Maybe I should shift over to offense. I've got skills. What do you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I always find myself cheering for them after they intercept it. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes, get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you got to watch them 
them a little bit because of coverage. They may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Second down, back to Sanders. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. So first and 10 now from the 30. Another run with Sanders. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Throwing his hurts. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm. But he was more than happy to dissect him with his legs for that first down pickup. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A couple of first downs have them to the 40 now on first and 10. Here's Hurts to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They're going to look to throw. That swung out wide to Sanders. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. On third down, they'll run it with Sanders. And he gets it down to the 48. Enough for the first. But first down hurts. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Looking to throw again on second down. Hurts. And once again, this is Sanders. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Second straight drive now here, Charles, that have ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to unnerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one, or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Here's Corral on first down. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And this one is incomplete. The offense schemed going five wide, trying to create a chance for the big shot, and they took it. If he comes down with that one, that's a huge offensive swing. But credit the defense with a nice play, knocking that one away. A final shot before the half for Corral. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. 
First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. The Panthers out in front and they will get the football first. Second half action underway. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And in hindsight probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16 yard line. This Carolina offense at the line ready to go. First down, here's Corral with it. And he'll find his man on the out route, that's Marshall. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Corral on second down, finding more on the out route for the completion. Just his second catch of the game so far, this one moves the chains. Now Foreman, and he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. But we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Taking a shot here for Marshall. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. Well, we saw this plenty last year in college. He loved to take his shots downfield. And that throw, that was a thing to behold there. And we often talk about hang time for punts. But in this case, we should probably calculate the hang time on that throw because that one hung up there for a long time. And managed to keep going and going until it found its target. Corral with it, first down here. And the final number on that throw, boy, it traveled an even 69 yards. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now a toss play, this is Foreman. And he takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. Deontay Foreman, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Panthers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. They make their second half debut here. And things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles. That touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game. And shedding the tackle, and now some room. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. 72 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his own line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he'll get across midfield and into Carolina territory. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. They'll go again with Sanders. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. They'll 
try and throw for it with Hurts. Open man, that's Devontae Smith. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. From the gun, it's Hurts. It's caught by Sanders. And he is going to lose yardage here. So they take the flag and the yardage that comes with it. Shotgun snap and then the give to Sanders. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. He'll look to throw. Hurts fumbles it. And this is going to get out of bounds, so they will gain a bit of yardage on the play, actually, and they'll hold on to the football as well. Thankfully for the offense, a fortuitous bounce there on the fumble goes out of bounds because they're down here in the red zone. You don't want to lose one there. You don't want to lose one, and the best part, because it went out of bounds, they retain possession, still have an opportunity to put points on the board. still theirs, but now they face a third down. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. The Eagles unable to convert there on fourth. And the Panthers will get the football back. First and ten for the Panthers as Corral gets him set at their own 19-yard line. They'll start the drive with a give to Foreman. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. A carry for Foreman. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Run blitz there defensively. Something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. They'll go for it on fourth. Here's Corral. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. And the Panthers turned away on fourth down. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. On first and ten, it's Hurts. This is complete to Watkins on the slam. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. To throw again on second down. Hurts. The Sanders has got it complete. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. And his throw is going to be incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him, and his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Hurts. And he comes back with one complete. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Hurts sets up to throw it. And that's going to be caught for an Eagles touchdown. Quez Watkins from six yards away. And the Eagles have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Elliott Good with a PAT. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. 
Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, and then, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Again, it's Foreman. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. 76 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And did he get in? No! They'll mark him out at the one-yard line. A big play there for Carolina. 67 yards on the ground. I'm assuming they're keeping this football on the ground, right? I would think so because you're looking at the clock. That's in your favor. You look at the geography of the field, right, where you are. That's in your favor as well. Keep it on the ground. Keep pounding. Run that clock down. You got everything working in your direction. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They'll go with Foreman, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. We all know how much running backs love getting the ball down near the goal line. They think they're going to find a way into the end zone. He hasn't had that kind of luck so far. Ends up not getting in on the last two carries. You know he's going to be upset about a missed opportunity. to throw Corral and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete well, that's a good piece of quarterbacking right there because he certainly felt the pressure coming the alternative getting sacked for the first time he didn't like that option at all did a nice job saving yardage by throwing that one away so that one CD going to make the road back a lot more difficult oh there's no doubt about that you know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again. But they can't worry about the last two points. The only thing that matters is scoring quickly, then they'll take it from there. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. To throw once more on second and 10. Hurts finding Watkins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little... And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. So after that sack, Hurts and the Eagles. Tough spot here. Third and long. 
Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Dante Jackson picks it. And he's going to get this down inside the 40 before he's finally ridden out of bounds. Well, obviously, Charles, this stage of the game, down two scores, they had to put the football in the air. Unfortunately, it gets picked off. And the criticism comes easily in situations like this, but you just laid it out. Look where they are on the scoreboard. Look at where the clock is in the game. He has to take a chance here and try and get the ball downfield to his receivers. Unfortunately, it was picked off. They'll run with Foreman. And he is going to be stopped here at the line of scrimmage. And time is going to expire in this football game. So this one is over. A victory for Carolina. And we talked so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. 